Westeros is a remote area of the Scottish Highlands, home to stunning wildlife, amazing scenery and a spectacular coastline studded with islands and inlets. But what's above the surface is just the start. There's a whole world underwater. Under the surface are rich marine ecosystems made possible by dancing kelp forests, slow-growing merl beds and intricate flame shell reefs. These support many other species such as fish, otters and dolphins. And this entire area of sea, encompassing all the Summer Isles, has been designated a marine protected area to help preserve and enable the recovery of these important and fragile ecosystems and species, such as flame shells, merle and kelp. I wanted to find out more, so I went to meet Elsa McClellan, a marine scientist and Loch Broom local. So why is this place special? What kind of wildlife do you see here? Yeah, Western Ross is an incredibly beautiful part of Scotland. Uh, it's got a really indented kind of fjordic coastline that is really rich in biodiversity, lots of lovely seaweed species. We've got some great seabirds here if you get a bit further out of the loch into the Minch because the sea eagles seem to be doing incredibly well around here. Lots of lovely auks. So underwater in the marine protected we've got merl, uh, sea pens, flame shells, the seagrass in areas and we hope to restore the oyster beds so they can become part of this whole ecosystem again. And a lot of these villages around here were built on, on fish, like Ullapool was formed because of the herring fishing industry. That has gone but now it's still got quite a strong fishing influence from the shellfish fisheries that operate out of here. So the community helped to designate this marine protected area. Why is it important? I think uh, we're really lucky here because the community are so engaged um, with the sea and so it was a good joint effort between a lot of people who want to see change in the area and um, until we had that marine protected area you could have scallop dredgers in here right up to the shore. Being able to exclude that kind of fishing from a coastal area is really important and it protects carbon sinks and biodiversity. So what do you mean by a carbon sink? The biggest carbon sinks we have in Scotland are marine much bigger than the trees and the peat and their terrestrial soils combined and our best carbon sink is marine mud that is this still quiescent mud that's settled out in our inshore sea lochs and places and it's really important to protect that from disturbance because as to this day there is no known way to kind of restore that mud if it's disrupted um, and that is exactly what scallop dredging does to it it disrupts it it lowers biodiversity and it renders that carbon sink a little bit worse than it was before. How important is creating marine protected areas? I mean, creating actual marine protected areas with measures in place so that they're not just paper parks is absolutely vital for us to start controlling climate change. We, we know that um, fish are part of the carbon cycle, seabed habitats absorb carbon, and at the moment very little of that is protected from the bottom-toed fishing gear that damages and destroys biodiversity and carbon sinks. So we have to put these measures in place, get them properly policed so that they're actually functional and get that done as a matter of urgency and not at some distant point in the future. What are the main types of fishing that are affecting the marine environment on the west coast of Scotland? Um, it'd have to be bottom dragged fishing gear where the heavy metal gear has been pulled over the seabed and that's predominantly prawn trawling and scallop dredging. Scallop dredging, which is the most damaging, is banned from the whole marine protected area and prawn trawling from parks. So are other types of fishing still allowed within the area? Yep, so they can do rod and line fishing, creel fishing is allowed, scallop diving. The fisheries themselves haven't been closed, they're just looking to be exploited in a more sustainable way than they were previously. So do you think this marine protected area could help to replenish those fish stocks and rejuvenate the marine environment here? I think there's, there's no question it could do that. I mean, there's, there's evidence from around the world and closer to home at Lyme Bay that you can have a recovering environment alongside a really flourishing fishery if you just take out the stuff that's damaging the seabed. Do you, as a member of the community here, feel proud of the protection that's been offered to your local area of ocean? Yeah, I mean, I think when you see um, other communities that, have, that aren't even aware of their marine protected areas or have 
useless marine protected areas that don't have any protective measures in place, you realise how lucky we are here to have an actual functional one. And it's that's a lot of that is down to this community being so active and concerned about the sea and taking a stance. So that's a lovely thing. It was great to hear from Elsa that the Westeros Marine Protected Area now supports some of the ocean's most important ecosystems and species. One such species is kelp. It's an incredibly important species here in the marine ecosystem. It's easy to see how it can be overlooked when we can't really see it from land, but underwater there are forests of this stuff. Merle is another really important species here, and it's also heavily threatened by dredging. It's a coralline algae, it's basically Scotland's equivalent of a coral reef, and it only grows at one millimetre per year, but it creates these amazing interlocking, intertwining structures, which can act as nurseries for fish and scallops. Another person involved in this marine protected area is Noel Hawkins, a passionate member of the Ullapool community who, having worked as a fisherman himself, has seen firsthand some of the changes here in the Westeros marine protected area. So Noel, you live here in Ullapool and you spend a lot of time out on the water. What is it you do? I work on a, a tour boat that operates out of Ullapool. Uh, we go out from Ullapool, uh, work our way around uh, Loch Broom and out to the Summer Isles uh, within the MPA territory. Occasionally push on a little bit beyond it out into the Minch if weather conditions are right. And what kind of things are you seeing from the wildlife tour boat? Uh, as the seasons change we see a, a variation in things. It usually starts off, you know, it's quite quiet in spring. Porpoise, we've got them resident. Uh, the, the dolphins come in as it starts warming. Uh, we've got sea eagles out there, a lot of seabird activity. Been hit a little bit by avian bird flu, but there's still a lot out there. Uh, and we even see minke whales, and this year we had a really close encounter with a fin whale. Um, on occasion we do get orca in, um, and resos and pilot whales, huge variety. It changes all the time depending on what the fish are doing, basically. So a fin whale off the boat this year, that's the world's second biggest whale. How did it feel to see that? It was quite humbling actually, we, we, we've seen them before at a distance, we're pretty sure we had at the distance, weren't sure. This one, we saw the blow, we knew something large went alongside, it came to us, came right in alongside, was bigger than the boat, did a barrel roll under us, had a look, came round us, dolphins all around it, feeding on whatever it was bringing in, minky well on the outsides of it. Everyone pretty much put down cameras and just gasped and watched actually, it was so, it was overpowering in, in some ways. Do you think the amount of wildlife we've seen here is linked to the fact that it's a marine protected area? Pretty much all the wildlife out in a marine environment is dependent on uh, fish and, and prey. Uh, we believe we're seeing a rise in uh, fish numbers and variety of fish, some of the species returning, and we are seeing more predators. D dolphin numbers are up, uh, we're seeing a lot more eagles, uh, basically predators on the whole, we're seeing a lot more activity and a lot more occurrences out there. And this is historically a herring port, isn't it? Are you seeing other fish like herring and cod in, in more numbers these days? It, the herring's a strange one. We do have a little bit of herring still, but uh, it, it almost got decimated in the early 70s. Uh, we're seeing some spawning going on. Uh, we're also seeing the return of haddock and cod, which is great news. Um, they've been absent for a long time and we're getting quite good numbers, big enough to catch and, and eat some people. Uh, we're also getting reports of uh, bluefish tuna. Uh, which historically we found uh, back in the 1860s there was a fishery out in the Hebrides. Last two years we've been getting more and more reports. We're still waiting on someone to prove it by either capturing them on camera or catch and release. Uh, we're optimistic that's going to happen imminently. So this marine protection seems like a really positive step for everybody in the community. I think we're demonstrating for, in terms of business tourist wise we're seeing a lot more divers uh, mass out there uh, taking people out mental health for people, I think the village is quite positive on the whole thing and with the return of haddock and cod hopefully it's going to improve the fishing conditions too and maybe return more work, we used to be, we're an historical fishing port, it'd be great if we could create more work and additional guys being able to stay and work here too in the future. It's clear that the marine protected area here is a real source of pride for the local community and that it benefits more than just the plants and animals that live here in the sea. We need to do more both around the UK 
and globally to protect our ocean and the invaluable ecosystems so that they can once again thrive and provide these incredible roles for our lives too.